The night has fallen, and as the wildlife simmers down to sleep, some monsters emerge under the cover of darkness. These bats have left the confines of their caves and are now ready to hunt. But they aren't hunting for insects or fruits. Instead, they have a lust for blood. Vampire bats are the only mammals to feed entirely on blood. They swoop down next to their victims, crawling towards them on all fours to strike at them from the ground. Razor sharp teeth slice into veins and the bats lap up the trickling blood with their tongue. They usually target sleeping cows and horses, but they have been known to target people as well. Feeding sessions can last for as long as 30 minutes. In fact, bats can drink up to half their weight in a day, and in just one year, a colony of 100 can drink the blood of 25 cows. The first known blood feeders may have been the early mosquitoes around 220 million years ago. Their long mouthparts can be seen in fossils, and they are most likely used in a similar way to those of modern mosquitoes. Today, there are thousands of species that feed on blood, both exclusively and occasionally. Blood feeding has evolved several times in the invertebrates, including in leeches, nematode worms, and of course insects with around 15,000 species representing at least six evolutionary events. In the vertebrates, it's an extremely rare strategy. Vampire bats are the only mammals to feed on just blood. They are members of a large and diverse family called Philostomidae, also known as the New World Leaf-Nosed Bats. At least 160 known species of bats are in this family. Most of them feed on fruits and nectar, while others feed on insects. Around 26 million years ago, the lineage that gave rise to the first vampires diverged from its family. And now there are only three species left, each one in a separate genus. There's the common vampire bat, the white-winged vampire bat, and the hairy-legged vampire bat. It's thought that blood feeding had evolved only once in a common ancestor shared by all three vampires. But these bats don't just stop at feeding on blood, they'll also share it between each other. For them, regurgitating blood into another's mouth is the mark of a true bond. Vampire bats establish relationships in horrifying French kiss. Here, food sharing is very much like how birds vomit food for their offspring. But what's special with vampire bats is that they do this for other adults and even strangers. If these creatures go without food for three days, they can starve to death, so sharing blood can be life-saving. These social interactions may be an important step in creating lifelong bonds, as some unrelated pairs have even been found to travel together for more than a decade. Surviving on a blood diet can be hard, it's a risky meal and doesn't carry much nutritional value. Blood is almost 80% water. It's incredibly low in most nutrients and vitamins, and of the few that it does contain, 93% are proteins, which makes it really difficult for the kidneys to process. In fact, blood feeders can run the risk of overwhelming the kidneys and bladder, as well as iron poisoning, which can ultimately lead to organ failure and death. Drinking the bodily fluid can also be deadly because of the high number of bloodborne diseases. These challenges may be why the behaviour is so rare in vertebrates. There are just too many issues to overcome for such a low value meal. So how can these bats live on the red liquid diet? This study tried to find out why. The authors analysed the genomes of both the common vampire bat and their gut bacteria and the results revealed these bacteria are key to surviving on blood. Vampire bats have cultivated a community of friendly bacteria, which over time have become highly adapted to their unusual diet. These microbes work in ways very different from those in other bats. They can actually help digest and metabolize the proteins in blood meals, breaking them down to produce vitamins, 
that the vampires can't normally get from their diet. This allows them to live on such a low-value meal. The researchers also compared their data with those of other bats that ate fruits, insects, or nectar instead. Although genome sizes were all similar, the vampire bats contained more transposons, which are also known as jumping genes, and these are genes that can change positions in the genome. Jumping genes were found in areas associated with metabolism, immune response, and viral defense. Together with the gut bacteria, these changes protected bats from the risks of their meal, driving the evolution of exclusive blood feeding. So when other bats chose fruits, flies, and flowers, how did these ones end up down the gothic path? Well, certain traits that bats already had helped suit it to the bloodthirsty lifestyle. First, they were nocturnal, which allowed them to take advantage of sleeping victims. They were also able to fly, so they could search over large areas for sources of food. These early vampires may have evolved from insect-eating bats that gorged on the parasites of large animals. In the process of picking them off, they may have accidentally drunk some blood too, and over time grew a taste for the red liquid. It wouldn't have been a large leap for the bats to then begin drinking the bodily fluids directly, and evolved into exclusive blood feeders. In fact, the vampire finches of the Galapagos Islands may have evolved their behavior in a similar way too. When there's a lack of food, these finches occasionally drink the blood of other birds by pecking at their skin with sharp beaks. Blood feeding in these little birds most likely evolved after picking parasites as well. What's more interesting is that their victims don't offer much resistance either, perhaps because they haven't caught on yet. In vampire bats, the evolution from insect eating to blood feeding may have only taken around 4 million years, which is incredibly fast when considering the number of changes that had to take place. Within 4 million years, the vampire bats developed anticoagulants, specialized teeth, heat sensors, and many other adaptations to make blood feeding a more successful strategy. All of these changes within such a short time frame make vampire bats one of the fastest examples of natural selection among mammals 